Hey devs! Today we're going to talk about Git and how to get started with Git on your local development machine. So today we're going to take a look at installing Git on your local development machine. Once we're installed and ready to go, we'll walk through the process of creating and initializing a new Git repository. We'll then go through what it looks like to add files to be tracked by that repository, staging those files for commit, and then finally committing those and adding them to our project's Git history. And then how to go back and look through your history as well. First things first, we need to install Git on our machine. Now we'll walk through that process for both Windows and Mac. So regardless of what type of machine you're working on, we should have you covered. To start off, open up your web browser and search for Mac install Git. From there, we'll scroll down and we'll select installing Git. This will bring us to a page with installation instructions for multiple platforms. So we're gonna focus on the installing on a Mac section. One of the first things it mentions is that the easiest way is to probably use the Xcode command line tools. To check if we already have this installed, we can open up a terminal window and execute the git dash dash version command. So as I do that on my machine, I'll see that I already have git version 2.10.1 installed. If you don't already have it installed, you'll be prompted to install it and you can walk through that install process. You can also download and install from the macOS Git installer that is also linked on the site. If you navigate to that page and start the download, once that download is then installed, you can open it up and start the install process. Once the wizard is opened up, you can hit continue, choose a standard installation when prompted, to install the software, go ahead and accept that option. And just like that, Git should now be on your machine. If you then rerun that git dash dash version command, you should also see it installed. Now we're gonna install Git on our Windows machine. So again, we'll search for install Git. This time we'll search for the installing on Windows section. And again, we'll see that we have a number of options. So for this particular case, we're going to choose the Git for Windows option. We're going to download the installer. Once that installer is downloaded, we'll go ahead and open that up and start the install process. We can hit next and basically just continue to hit next throughout this process. If you want to customize your editor, you can do that. I'm going to stick with Vim for now. And as we walk through those, eventually we'll get to the end and we can click finish. Once on the last page, go ahead and hit install. That'll take a while. Once installed, we're prompted with this final screen. And from there we can choose to view the release notes or go ahead and launch git bash and try out our new git system on windows. So we're going to skip the release notes for now, but go ahead and launch our git bash window. Now from here, we'll see that we should now be able to run the familiar git commands on our windows machine. So if we type the familiar git dash dash version, we now see that we have git successfully installed on our machine. Cool. Now that we have Git installed on our machine, it's time to walk through what the process is to actually initialize a new Git repository and start adding files and building up our project history. The first thing I'm gonna do is create a new directory on my desktop and name it hello git. This directory will house our new Git repository. I'll then change directory into that new directory and then type git init. And we'll see this now initializes an empty Git repository within that directory. We'll then open up our text editor so that we can add our first file that we'll want to track in this new Git repository. We'll go ahead and enter some text.
and we'll then save that file within our hello git working directory. In this case, we'll navigate to the desktop, select the directory, go ahead and name this readme.txt and hit save. Now let's take a look at how we can add that to our history. So we'll use the status command to look at the current status of the repo. You'll notice that it says we're on branch master. The only commit so far is our initial commit and we have one untracked file. If we do a git log, we'll see this message that our current branch master does not have any commits yet. This is because we just recently initialized a repository and haven't added any files to it yet. So now if we go back and we do our git status command once again, we'll again see that readme.txt is an untracked file. We're going to now take a look at how to turn this into a tracked file where we can maintain history for the file. We'll see it says nothing added to commit but untracked files present. Use git add to track. So the first step then is to stage this file to be tracked. After that, we can commit the file and keep it in our history. So we'll do git add readme.txt and hit enter. If we then do our git status command again, we'll now see that it says changes to be committed and it shows new file readme.txt. So the changes to be committed are considered to be staged. And obviously new file means that readme.txt is a new file to this repository. The next step then is to actually commit these changes to our history. So if we type git commit dash m, and then in quotes, we'll add our commit message and then hit enter. We then see the commit message printed back and we'll see a summary of the diff. In this case, one file changed with one insertion. Now type git log and this will print out the complete history for this repository. In our case, we have a single commit and we can see the commit hash on the first line followed by the author username and the date. And finally, we see the commit message. Now that we've committed our changes, if we type git status, we'll see that we're still on branch master, but we no longer have anything to commit, which means we have a clean working tree. Let's take a closer look at some of these commands. For any git command, if you type git, the name of the command followed by dash dash help, we can pull up the documentation for that command. In this case, we're looking at the git manual for the status command. So we'll see it lists the status, followed by a description of what the command does. It then gives us the pattern to follow when invoking that command. So in this case, it's git followed by status, any number of option modifiers followed by the path spec. And then as we scroll through the documentation, we can see what those different modifiers are and what they do. So in this case, we can see things like dash v or dash dash verbose or dash s or dash dash short. We can do the same then for the commit command. git commit dash dash help brings us up to this documentation page. And as we can scroll down, we see further information about the description of the command, about how to run different modifiers. Logging again is the same. If we type git log dash dash help, we bring up the manual. We see that the log command shows the commit log. And as we scroll down, we'll see that there are many options that let you control how that commit log is viewed. Let's explore these commands further by making changes to our readme and then committing those changes back to our repository. So I'll start off by adding a second line of text to our readme file. Once we have that second line, we'll save that file. We'll then do a git status to check the current status of our working tree. We now see that readme.txt is marked as a modified file this time instead of a new file. And if we open up the help command, 
we'll take a look at a few of the options here. Namely, we'll see the dash s or dash dash short command. And if we look at the description, it says it gives the output in a short format. So if we do git status dash s, we see this time the output is much shorter and it's on a single line. If we do git status dash dash short, the same thing, a single line output. Now, if we take a look again at git status, now we see the much larger full output. This time we'll do git add dash dash all again. We'll do git status. We now have our readme change staged. So again, we'll do git commit dash m to specify that we're gonna include the commit message. Then within quotes, we'll add that commit message. Once we're done, we'll hit enter. And so now if we do git log again, we see that we now have two commits. Let's take a look at another way of visualizing our commit history. We'll type git graph, and we'll see a much shorter version of that log history. You can create and assign aliases as well to combine these outputs. Here I have an alias called long graph, which executes the log dash dash graph dash dash decorate command. Git aliases are a great way to streamline your workflow, and we'll take a look at those further in a future video. All right, and that's it. We've now walked through what a basic Git workflow looks like. From here, you could begin to start using Git for your local projects. Now there's more to it. And in particular, in a future video, we'll look at how to start integrating with GitHub specifically. But for now, you can start building up that local history in your project's Git repository. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Until next time.